Coming up on today's Code Bet Daily Weekly AFL Show. Nailed it. It's round 11 of the AFL. We're breaking down every single game in the AFL this weekend. It's absolutely gnarly. There's some really good games too. Uh, Leo, what's your favourite fantasy bet? Oh, I'm all aboard the Dusty train this weekend, as well as Cornelio to dominate with no Josh Kelly. I like that. Alex, which well, game is your favourite? Essendon and West Coast, surprisingly. What? The Sheedy Bowl? Yeah, and, and actually, Collingwood North Melbourne's my next favourite game. There must be something wrong. That's weird. Start waving your scarves now. Uh, I just have a bit of a sook about Carlton for a pretty long time. Uh, I suck about Sydney. We're sandwich gonna, bed. Sandwich bets. We've got player props, sandwich bets, game picks, best bets, everything you need in there. It's pretty fun. It's the COVID Daily Weekly AFL Show. It's pretty good, I think. I hope. It better be. Welcome to Code Bet Daily Weekly AFL Show, you little ripper. That's right, it's round 11. Footy's back. Footy is back. I'm your host, a hobbled James Clements. I'm the editor of a very good website. It's called Code Bet. You can find it at codebet.com.au. Cripley Clementes. That checks out. <laughs> That's my Hudson Timian name. Uh, I'm joined, as always, by two of the pontiffs of Pontic. We've got Alex Donnelly over there. He's a pontiff yeah, now. Did I earn that right? You, you, well, you're the fantasy pontiff, so yeah. checks out. Uh, what are you, the junior executive vice president of content creation? <laughs> Sounds so. about right. Yeah. yeah, that's me. And, and Leo is social guy. Social guy. Just social guy. <laughs> Fantasy <laughs> guy. Fantasy guy. All right, what's going on, Alex? Uh, yeah, we're, you and I are ready to put ourselves through some torture. But you know what? At least it's over tomorrow night. Yep. Leo, he's up and about. His team are the biggest winners of the year so far with 116 is points. Is that right? Who would have bet on that? No one. Yeah, absolutely no one. Yeah, I think the tip I had in the paper was 1 to 39 for Hawthorne. <laughs> you got Jeez. that one wrong. Anyway. I, uh, I took the under and they somehow hit the under. So we've got yeah. Social Guy here to do a fantasy tip for all the games as well. We are going to go through every single game of round 11 because footy's back. Yeah. And go bet daily. That's what we do. And the weekly show is when we go through each of the AFL weeks. Hell yeah, we do. Pretty simple, really, when you break it down like that. Player props, game picks, best bets for every single game of round 11. To recap last week's results, I just continued my year of tipping mediocrity. Yeah. Five. Ugh, brutal. Uh, stats guys are now on the lead. He had six last week as well. Alex had six. Yeah, I got two upsets and then stuffed up by tipping GWS. Yeah. That was that too. great. Uh, bit of a tough one. So stats guys in the lead at 64. Alex, 58. I'm at 54. Uh, Leo has jumped in. So I, I'm on 64 tipping, but right. that 8 out of 19 is my fantasy record. I'm not that's giving him 64 because he hasn't been on this show all that's, season through. He could be fair, lying about fair. that number. Well, Hence you could just look it up. You could just look it up. No, nah, you know what? No. <laughs> I can't be bothered. You're 8 of 19 in fantasy bets, so let's roll yeah. with that. 8 from 19. 8 of 19. But tipped six winners last week, I believe, not five. I wrote that down wrong because he tipped Essendon. I did. So Very six. lucky. Yeah. Good stuff. Right on. This week, round 11, it is shaping up as a very wonky, weird round. We've also got Stats Guys tips here too. Cool. We've got five five games on the Saturday. Which is so dumb. It is. Right? Yeah. So many games are on at the one time. You literally could have played Geelong and GWS tonight. They would have packed it out because Geelong people have nothing to do and they've only got half a stadium to go to. And we would have watched it because footy's on and I don't want to watch the Dolphins play St. George. You don't? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all over it. Uh, no, let's start on Friday then because, look, this entire no Thursday night footy is just dragging. But I think it's like two more weeks. A couple more weeks and we'll be back. But either way, Friday we kick off the round with a sandwich bet game between the Sydney Swans uh, and the Carlton Blues. So my beloved Carlton, Alex's beloved Swans, we don't know what the sandwich bet is because I believe we're both tipping Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think yeah, but I think it's just team t- the team bet. Sure, two dollars uh, around that two dollars oh two for Sydney, a dollar eighty one for Carlton. Carlton favourites on the road. It just Swans have lost their last three at the SCG. That's it. I don't feel great about it. Carlton are two and a half point favourites. Uh, so at least they're kind of like, yeah, we don't really know either. Checks out. <laughs> but the over under, we talked about this on the Daily Show. It's one hundred sixty four point five. Uh, my initial tip for this game is go the under just because Carlton stink. I'm a Carlton, Carlton fan. I don't want to watch Carlton. You know how bad they are to watch week in, week out? It's like, at least with North Melbourne, you go, oh, the young kids are good. This is Carlton's <laughs> full strength side. <laughs> yeah. It's like we don't have Zach Williams and we don't have Jack Martin, and that's about it. What are you doing during the week? You're anymore. a bunch of mids. You're just it's mid. So mid. It is just horrible. Uh, it's painful to watch week in, week out. But look, this game. 
I've tortured myself by watching every Swans game too, Sydney except as well. for the second half of the Geelong game. We've got lots of injuries for Sydney. Uh, you've got no talls. Laddams went down. Another tall went down. You basically got Buddy, uh, Tom Hickey, Aaron Francis, and McLean. Yeah, four tall dudes in the entire team. Uh, tricky one this week against Carlton. So Sydney, as you said, uh, they've lost the last three at the SCG. Mm-hmm. Two Carlton. by a kick. Carlton are two and eight of the SCG since 2010. All right. So <laughs> not great. Charlie Kerno is zero and three of the SCG. How's your form? I think Sydney won the last 11 of 15. Yeah. But Carlton have won three of the last four. And they've all so, been in Melbourne. Yep. So oh, one was at Gold Coast. Sorry, during COVID. It's the tricky part of trying to like pass out this form and try to figure out. We talk about human nature. Ah, be there every Third time. This week. The, the simple idea of like, do Carlton have a fire lid under them after? Yet again. And you thought another. it would have been last week against Collingwood, Collingwood 90,000 yeah. at the G. But Collingwood are also really good. But yeah. it's also like <laughs> you did it, but you never looked like they, a threat. They did not. They didn't once did you look they like a threat. Stuck. It stinks. It was terrible. So it comes down to the simple idea of like Kerno, he had six against them last year against against the Swans. He but was that, awesome. Again, was a God, marvel. he was good. And that was a marvel. A, that's when you were and flying to. You were seven and one. That would have been against the McCartan Bros, and now they're out of the team. Uh, so. Paddy wasn't playing, oh, okay. and Josh Kennedy ripped his hamstring off his bone cleaning up Doherty. It was literally this round last year, as I remember. We both had the um, the Margrook, uh, or so, so Doug Nichols, Guernsey's on. Yep. Okay. Uh, so for me, a lot of this sort of simply comes down to like Carlton ball usage and defensive mid pressure, which they stink at, and yeah, they can. There's this sort of weird mix of Carlton having a lot of disposals, not doing a lot with it. Oh, hell yeah. Horrible getting inside 50. So they're just like booting it, hoping for the best. There's nothing else really going on. And Sydney will make you pay. Like the midfielders that you got left are really we've good. Got, we've got all of our midfield except for Callum Mills. Yeah. So you'll be fine, I think. But I think Carlton will just sneak this out. I think we get. A pretty big buddy game. He loves smashing Carlton. I think he's got 90, uh, 73 goals in 19 games. Yeah, I brought that average up 3.8 a so game. 3.8. That's a fair amount. He's 16 and 3 against Carlton. Can go. Can go. Uh, that's the fourth highest mark he's got against any team. And yeah. I think it's the least amount of games he's taken to get there, too. Cool. So not bad. Not bad. He's game also 50 kicked. for Chumley as well. He's kicked 10, 7, 6, and 4 twice against yeah. the Blues. So. Buddy, three plus goals was my easy one. You yeah. could actually get that at three dollars seventy five earlier in the week with Bet three six five. It was good last week. I think it was his best game of the year last week. And yeah. it's like, oh, it was North. He had, he had three. three last week, but yeah. it was up against the other Mackay. Yep. Like he actually played really well. Made was good defensively as well. Like made a couple of late tackles that mattered as well. So obviously Parker, Chad, Chundley, Warner, and Errol. Whoa, Errol mm. Golden. Um, with that lack of defensive pressure, they're going to rack them up. Golden 25 plus. Golden got tagged last week yeah. too. Easy $1.72. You'd be worried though if Ed Kerno tags him. Wouldn't yeah, but why not you... Ed Kerno wouldn't... doesn't worry anybody. <laughs> I was about to say, Ed wouldn't Kerno you be more worried... Ed me. Wouldn't like... you be more worried about Warner's run and carry? He's he's very number true. one in the competition for metres gained, I think. Yeah, very true. One of them is. Loves the SCG as well, does yeah. Chad. So, good on you, Chundley. But whoa, we're all going to crush this. He's been awesome. He's averaging over 25 a game yes, anyway. Yeah. So, They've the 25 lifted. plus disposals, I feel like for me, for Errol, is like the easiest one. Of that Swans midfield. For Carlton, it's Sam Walsh. He's just, he, he just doesn't gets, like not touch the ball. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's crazy. But it's not super impactful at the moment. That's at the problem. The moment, yeah. He's like a superstar who doesn't superstarily impact a game. Yeah. It's weird. Uh, like so, Jack McRae when the Bulldogs were like or before this year when they were really good. Sure. Uh, Chair is averaging 27 touches a game as well, so 25 plus for him. Lack of impact. Bang, lack of impact. He actually, I think, leads the Blues for inside 50s. Yeah. But that's not saying much because the rest of them stink. I was so. about to say, if Chair has had five touches in the first five minutes, you know Carlton are chipping it around. Yep. Sam Walsh, 30 plus. Chair, 25 plus. They're yep. the easy ones for me because uh, I think Walsh, I did have that written down somewhere, but I feel like Walsh has, did I write that in yesterday's maybe? Mm. Or in the multi. There we go. He's gone over 25 touches in every single game he's played this year. So the yeah. 25 plus. But didn't he also do it like last year? He's got like a ridiculous streak yeah, it's, going. It's, it's crazy. It's like so, 20 games. Uh, Kerno as well. Charlie. Yep. Not the he's rubbish the one. one. Four plus goals is only $2.20. If he can get off the leash, yeah. I think it can go really big. They're looking at saying, oh, the Swans have got no size. De- yeah, no right. defense. That's why he's going to go big. I think that's really short, but if he doesn't impact the game, he's the one. He He's going to yep. win this game off his boot because. He's the guy, everyone's just looking at going, yeah, he kind of rules and can rule this game. Yeah, That's absolutely. It. Harry Mackay. 
Harry McFive, let's go, huzzah! 15 bucks. He's shortened. He's shortened this week. It's maybe because he didn't try to banana it into the roof of the MCG last week because it doesn't have a roof. And he could kick one of these footballs into Fox Studios <laughs> over the back of the SCG. Uh, Hope there's not a game at Allianz because there could be a football. Like, what is that? Oh, it's an AFL <laughs> footy. Hey, watch out. But anyway, the pick for me, look, I've really struggled with this. We've had different Ugh. tips. Um, you, you can and I read back into and it. forth about this all week. So two and eight at the SCG. Three of their last four, they've won though. Who knows? But the SCG is just a tough one. I've gone Sydney 139 at times. I've just landed on Carlton 139. And that's how I feel. It stinks. <laughs> I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Anyway, trying to pick this game has sucked. I don't want to talk about it ever again. Yeah. Uh, what's the fantasy pick for you there, Liam? Uh, you touched on him. I'm looking at Adam Chera for 100 plus fantasy points uh, for two dollars. Two dollars fifteen with Ladbrokes. Um, he averages 99 this season, but he's just in fantastic form. Um, I mentioned him for 100 plus a couple of weeks ago, and he absolutely smashed it against Brisbane. So, um, yeah, those odds. I'm, I'm very happy to, to take that. Yeah. Good one, Alex. I'm tipping Carlton to win, but Heaney. Showed a bit last week in that last quarter. I think he's back. 15 plus disposals, $1.57. Two goals at $2.02. There was a couple of times where he took marks in the last quarter. He finally got that full extension in his jump and like took it at the peak of his jump. So I'm like, I think you're back. And he kicked that late goal to get us in front or get us within a goal yeah. and sort of snuck that in like, oh, you're back. I think you're back. And it's like not as much pressure here. He's sort of that one who can step up and be like, if he pops up with you know, 15, 16 and three, it's like, oh, yeah, you can sort of, not as good as Charlie, but you can, like, match that level of uh, winning the game off your own boot, shall yeah, we say. Sure. What's the sandwich bet? Well, I'm gonna t- it's just my team versus your team. I'm tipping Carlton to win, but if the Swans win, you owe me a sandwich. Right. Carlton win, I owe you a sandwich. Easy. Done. St Kilda Hawthorne on Saturday. What this game, game is not great. I won't be watching it. Sorry, Leo. I don't think I will be. <laughs> Your team, Leo, is four dollars fifty to win this against the Saints, which is actually pretty long because the Saints aren't burning their house down exactly, but they are a class. Yeah, they're also they're coming off a hundred and seventy-five point win. Yeah, <laughs> two hundred million. It's, oh, it's going to be like three hundred by the time we get to the West. The Coast Saints game. are a dollar twenty-three uh, with Top Sport. The line is twenty-seven and a half, and that's where I landed with this too. The yeah, twenty-seven same. and a half line for Saints. They're not. I don't feel like they're going to blow the doors off Hawthorne to the tune of like sixty odd, no. but I do think they just sort of. Win by it's 30, like 12 five. goals to seven, yeah. and Max King kicked five of them. Yep, yep, I agree with that. Uh, so talking about this game, the, that line, the over under is 157.5, 156.5. This all comes down to whether or not you think Hawthorne can kick a score, which I do not. Yeah, because I don't think the Saints are really going to go not gonna rampaging. Play training cones. Yeah, yeah, like you're rampaging. Not wrong. I don't think they're going to rampage over the top of the Hawks, but I don't think the Hawks are going to make them pay anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like the under is the play there for and 156 don't and a half. Hawthorne have like a stinky record against the line at Marvel. Yes, they do. Yeah. At Marvel specifically. Yeah. yeah. They, I think yeah. it's seven out of the last eight they haven't go. covered. That was nice. right. Yeah. So there you Good go. Job. They have failed to cover the line in seven of its last eight at Marvel. This, that is this feels good. like 88 to 50. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Some of the player props that I looked at for this, obviously Max King. Yeah. Uh, he looked goal, good last week. He looked really good in his return, right? Like for that to be his first first game back, you're like, dude, it feels like cheating. Yeah, it does. What are you doing? How many um, did he kick in the end? Three. Yeah, or not four. bad. Yeah. And so I think for the price that we had for him yesterday, three plus goals, $2.25 yeah, for Bet365. Feels perfect. Wait, what? Uh, your guys, Mitch Lewis, kicked six last week. Yeah, Two one of my plus favorites. is like a happy little sort of. Baseline. Oscar Allen bet. <laughs> it's the Oscar Allen bet. Yeah. It really is the Oscar Allen bet. Two plus, $2.25. Um, he had three game, three against the Saints at the start of last year, and he's got 18 and nine games at Marvel. Yeah. So yeah. can slot two every game. And the thing is for really- Hawthorne, you can dine out on this win for a few weeks because it's like, hey, we did that. Yeah. It doesn't matter if we lose. Our kids showed that they can be, can and will be awesome yep. next year. We showed that we're well, maybe the year after even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, but you've got to get your thing in in the next three years because that's when the Tasmanian drafts are, yeah, I think. So you I better be good that. in three years or you are <laughs> yeah, screwed. get your tank in now. Uh, Connor Nash as well was another one. 25 plus yeah, disposal, $1.68. Yeah. Uh, Sinclair for the Saints at 37 yeah. last week. He was Two ridiculous. Well. He was awesome. Yeah. He's averaging over 28, the 30 plus for him. Yeah. It was still $2.20 uh, with Ladbrokes yeah. when I wrote this yesterday. And so. we're doing this as teams haven't been named, but members should come back in for... Um, uh, God, the big dude from St Kilda got knocked out last week. Got kneed in the face. I know who you're talking about. Way to go. Yeah. Anyway, the point being, the Saints, they're 7-3 for a reason. I'm the defense. On that the defense, yeah. the defense, the defense. 
they're going to choke the life out of your poor Hawks. Mitch oh. Owens. Oh, Mitch Owens, yeah, of course. That's, yeah. Of course he did. Um, this is a Hawthorne team. What do they have? Like, they basically got to 40 points like in three different games where you're like, oh, oh, this is not good. Yeah. But not they good. A lot last week. But yeah. then, so I think they've averaged 60 a game this season if you take yeah. out the Eagles game. So yeah. the under and I think the Saints win this one. I'm taking them at the line, the yeah. minus 27 and a half. Uh, Leo, do you have a fantasy bet I for you? I do. Uh, you mentioned Sinclair 30 plus for $2.20. I think you could um, add this leg to it. 100 plus fantasy points for Jack Sinclair's $2.20 as well. With oh, there you go. Bang. Um, he got a steal. Steal, he would be good value too, I think, yeah. even from 110 if you wanted to. Yeah, nice. Um, but he averages 97 Sinclair, but playing, you know, a low side in Hawthorne, he'll, he'll dominate. He got 141 last week. As you said, it was a huge game. So um, I think that's great value at that price. At, uh, yeah, that price. That that's game was un, like underratedly good, GWS and St Kilda. Like, yep. No one watched yep. it, Did not but watch it was good. <laughs> I watched the start. <laughs> shout, out to, <laughs> shout out to Code Bet's own Phil for commentating with Leon Cameron. Good stuff. Uh, the pick for me, obviously the Saints. Alex. Saints. Who did Stats Guy go to? Uh, I've got it here. He went, he went Saints. So, yeah, Stats Guy's gone Carlton and Saints to kick All off. All right, give us Nam and Willie up. <laughs> yep, so that's uh, Melbourne and Fremantle for those not paying attention, but we're calling them the Sir Doug Nichols names this week. Um... Yeah, nah, their form. Not much good. Mm. They come up against a good team last week in Port and without a forward line, they still got rolled by four points. Absolutely ripping game. When you look at the losses that the Ds have had this year, 82, 77 and 76 points, all their wins have been... That they've scored. Yeah, that they've yeah. scored. Right. When the I was going to say, they didn't get smashed by that much. No, they've, sorry, yeah, yeah. They've, scored, they've scored 82 and under in right. their three losses. In their wins, I think their lowest score is 90. They've had a nut. They kicked like... 15 8 or something to win a game, and all the others have been well over 100. So you get the clamps out, Jim. Clamp, clamp, clamp. You want to use these clamps? You do that these to the clamps. D's. You lock them down under 93 and a half points total game for the D's is $1.90, Ooh. which sort of leads me in. No Clayton Oliver. He's missed one game out of the last 146 that he's been That's available remarkable. for. And that it was round ridiculous. 18 last year when Joel Selwood tried to kick his hand into Punt Road. Petraka, this is where he's got to sort of step up and, and lean in. He's had 30-plus in four of his last five at the MCG. And he also had 30-plus in the game that Oliver missed, which was round 18 last year against Port Adelaide. So at least it's recent. You still don't have a – and Melbourne won that game, but it's like, oh, sample size. It's one game. We can't really talk about it. You look at Bailey Fritch coming up against uh, – uh, Wally up. He's got uh, six goals in his last two games against them. He really needs to lift here like because they've got no forward line. Like It's just like, oh, yeah, oh, Bailey Fritch, yeah, you'll do. <laughs> um, but he's also got two plus and ten of his last 12. So I'm looking at him for three plus because he needs to kick those goals if they're to win it. Yep. Two bucks, 85 for that. But what I'm most interested in is what the human hybrid machine Luke Jackson is going to do. He's coming up against the Ds for the first time. I'm sure there'll be a bit of boo and push and shove and whatever. Yeah, whatever. He went back home. Who cares? Uh, 24, 17, and 15, his last three, along with five goals. I'm just more concerned about how many people you think might be at this game to actually boo Luke Jackson. Probably all be up in Buller. <laughs> it's just I mean, it's a bit of a cold snap. I was about to say it's raining. They're taking the Range Rovers afternoon. It's raining. But the Ds are a chance of winning, so they might turn up. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Jackson, 20 plus is $4.33. Hey. I was like, oh, I don't mind that. And he's a buck 68 to kick a goal. Now, looking into Wally Lupp's form, they've kicked 100 plus against the grand finalists in the last two weeks. What has been the most important thing other than the obvious scoring, Jim? Uh, touches. Sarong and Brayshaw yeah. had 60 plus combined in those two wins. Pretty good. So, safe to say, 60 plus between those two boys. They win. Brayshaw turning a corner has been pretty big for Freo, right? Yes, he was, he's had 30-plus in his last four. Yeah, pedestrian start, but they've sort of turned yeah. that corner. They've gotten better as he's gotten better. Yeah. Yeah. So 30-plus for both of them is $1.64 Brayshaw. Sarong is $1.53. But I think it was um, like 34 and, and uh, 31 one week, and last week was like 30 and 39 or something. It was ridiculous. Yeah. So if they get their hands on the ball that much and deliver it to the forward line, which was just – that's the thing that they beat Geelong with was speed. If they can do that against Stephen May and Jake Lever, they can win They've this game. Because you a unique forward Because you look too. at him and go, who's going to kick your goals? Yeah. Frederick, Amos. Amos looks the guy. I'm yeah. going to go with him. Like, it's you weird. Know, it doesn't work, but you know what? I, I don't mind the line. We didn't mention the line. It's uh, up to 20 and a half now. So it's gone up this afternoon. It's I'm incredible. Like, I'm all over that. Because let's remember, last year, Fremantle kicked 12 goals to one in the second half to smack the 10-0 Demons. It 12 goals. Yeah. 
So a dollar. Th- so as it was written out, dollar thirty eight for the D's. Yep. Three dollars twenty for the Dockers. Yep. That seems wildly out of whack for yep. me. So especially when I'm like, I don't think Melbourne's form's that good. Yep. And I think the Dockers are on the charge. The tricky part is like, what's Frio's actual record when they play at the G? Don't care. They beat Melbourne last year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those <laughs> they ones got where you smashed lo- in the final last year. Yeah. So you sort of dig into those ones and go, well, they're just in a little bit better form. The prices are just a little bit out of whack. Can Frio travel after a really good showing last week? Well, they went to Sydney and they hadn't won there since Jesus was a boy. Exactly. So uh, it's going to be huge. Fascinating to see. Yeah. My tip is Frio, I think. So I'm tipping Frio. I've tipped That's them in the preview. I'm going Melbourne. Stats guys with Melbourne as well. Nice one. All right. Who's the uh, fantasy one that you're looking at here, Leo? Yeah, Christian Petrarca. Love his yeah. TikToks as Marcus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Marcus hates it. Christian Petrarca. Uh, Hates his TikToks, which is really No, weird. let's just go with he hates him. That uh, makes it better. Um, but I'm going for him. 110 plus fantasy points, $2.30 with Labrokes. Averages 104 this season, but I think that lift in score will come from no Clary. Yeah. He's got to be the guy in there now. As you said last year, dominated when Clary went out of the team, and I think that will happen again. Nice. Uh, and at the G, 10 and 15, or well, since, what, 2010. Uh, 10 and uh, 15. Uh, uh, Freo. That's, That's not, not bad. too bad. 10 and 15 over the last... 13 years. Uh, but over the last few years, only two and four. Yeah, it's not, so not terrible. You just sort of pay it. Yeah. It's better than I expected. Mm. Uh, so there you go. Frio for, I think, us. Yep. And Leo. That's going Leo with uh, the Ds. All right. Geelong GWS. Yeah. Cats are dollar eleven, which it does seem short after getting beaten in their last two. The line's 41 and a half. GWS is seven bucks fifty. Over under is 174 and a half. I guess we lean to this straight away, why the price is like this. GWS are without uh, Himmelberg and Haynes. They both got concussed last week. That is kind of important. Patrick Dangerfield may play this week, but you look at this Cats injury list. Jai Clark out, Dangerfield out, De Koning out, Duncan out, Guthrie, Henry, Holmes, Menangola, Rowan, Stanley. That's not good. It's That's a, a very long list. It's a bit. It's a bit. So I hate the I hate the line in this. Like yeah. the fact that it's like forty one is just no thank you. So yeah, there's a thing with that is GWS have failed to cover the line in some ridiculous amount of games against teams that have been in the top eight. Um, I've got it written down in the preview, but yeah, it's like okay, that's not at all good. But forty one and a half doesn't feel right, especially when Geelong, who are uh, fifty two and eight in their last sixty games at GH NBA Stadium. What happened last time GWS rolled down to Geelong, Jim? GMHBA? Yeah, GMHBA. <laughs> I think you said GHMBA. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> it's a long name. It's stupid. Just call it Cadinia Park, you jerks. Jeez, will you front the cost of uh, changing the name <laughs> they back? They can't and... build a stadium on time, so screw them. <laughs> well, I don't know. I feel like you should buy the names rights and then just front Stats that Stats Guy Stadium. Nice. Uh, so the GW... Sandwich Bet Stadium. Done. <laughs> Could give it a better name stadium. Uh, so it's the last nine games against the top eight GWS Oof, have failed great. to cover the line in teams in the top eight. Uh, but GWS did win the last time they came down to uh, Geelong, so that's a pretty good record. That's one of those weird ones, right, where it's like Frio and GWS, like teams like yeah. that just randomly come into GMHBA. Yeah, I think it's like Cats. Frio sit until Sydney got beaten the other yeah. day and Frio, like the last three, it's like... Oh, Bizarre. yeah. I think Port might have done it as well. It's like really weird. It's not teams that you sort of expect. Sure. Um, and I think GWS are one and five interstate. Jeez, they're going to stop playing in Canberra. Quite not honestly. ideal, bro. Not uh, ideal. So, yeah, you, you look at that. I'm looking at Jeremy Cameron. He's my starting point. Big game for him against his old club. Everyone, you know, kind of forgets now that he was awesome at GWS. 20 plus disposals, $2.20. Three goals is a buck yeah, like 50. That. And this, I think, I still think he's going to get up the ground. So, these will be, you know, those Cameron bombs from 55, 60 out. Could leave Hawkins one out. No Haynes and Himmelberg. It's like, oh, who's their Callum Mills that's going to get slaughtered by Hawkins? Yeah. Like, it's the same sort of feel for me. Uh, he's got six goals in the last two weeks. He's got three plus in five of his last six, but I'm looking at four plus at $3.75. And for GWS, for like sort of looking, how are GWS going to beat Geelong? Similar to what you need to do to the Ds. Got to get the clamps out. Hold on to the pill and just beat them with pace. That's how Richmond ran through them. That's how Fremantle ran through them. Just back it in. You know, if it doesn't come off, it doesn't come off. You're $8 against a dollar eleven for God's yep. sake. Whitfield, 30 plus, $2.55. Uh, Cornelio has had 25 plus in his last 10. I'm looking at 30 at $2.25. Green has kicked three plus goals in his last three down at Geelong, $2.65. Jeez. So this could be a better game than what the odds are saying. Yeah, definitely. But it's just like, 
This should be the Thursday night game. It's a horrible <laughs> uniform matchup as well for a Saturday afternoon. No, no, just, they'll, they'll be in the charcoal. As long as it will. Still, I just don't uh, like a dark color against Geelong. Indigenous Guernsey or? Oh, yeah, we'll be, yeah. yeah. Might be interesting then. Let's have a look. Yeah. Uh, but this is, in terms of GWS, the two and four are GMHBA. Yeah. Which isn't bad. If you're going to win two out of six. Yeah. That's all right. Considering how good the Cats have been for so long and how bad GWS usually are. Yeah. Uh, What's your fantasy pick there, Leo? I'm having a look at Stephen Canilio for 100 plus fantasy points, paying $2.05. Um, average is 101, so just to hit his average, $2.05 is Oof. pretty good. But also, um, Josh Kelly is apparently out for a month, yeah, so that, that opens right? the door for him oh. as well. Yep. Um, yeah, just gives him more room to work with uh, alongside Tom Green, so I think that's a very good bet. Just good to hit his average, yeah. Sweet. Uh, the pick, it's Geelong. Geelong. Just to win Geelong, it. Yep. Just That's guy, Geelong. I don't mind GWS at the line, though. But yep. without Kelly, I forgot about that. It's a bit of a tricky one. Yeah. A bit more of that midfield oomph. But I don't know. I think they can keep it vaguely close. That just gives Finn Callahan more time in the midfield. Yeah. Nice one. All right. Uh, Gold Coast Western Bulldogs. Yeah. Marcus was actually on this game. This is up at TIO Stadium. Woo! Up in the NT. I'll see you in the NT. Uh, <laughs> $2.55 for the Gold Coast Suns to win this one. Doggies, dollar fifty three. That's with Ladbrokes. One the of the last six in Darwin. They are absolutely flying at TIO. Uh, Eleven and a half is the line. One hundred fifty one point five is the over under. That's gross. It's unders. Gross. Big, big yeah. sweaty, terrible game to watch. Yeah. McRae, twenty five plus. Just yeah. lock it in. He's done it. Eighteen handballs. <laughs> it's weird that you said eighteen because he's had that in eighteen straight games. Oh really? <laughs> that is not as a favourite. So. Uh, I think the Dogs win this one. This is a couple of other sort of things. You've got three straight, I think, for Bont, 25-plus. Yeah. Shalor's still out. Uh, give me more the Bont. Libba has gone for 25-plus in five straight as well. Flies under the radar a little I, bit. I, I said so, last yeah. week, I think he's going better than Bont. Yeah. I think he's, he's got, their most important mid, for sure. He does a lot. He's mm. awesome. Got an awkward running style, that's why. He does, doesn't You watch it? him run, you're like, you aren't an athlete. <laughs> but he really is. Uh, and on the Suns front, you've got Ben King, three plus in four of the last five. Yeah. Just, Liam Jones probably towels him up. Just, oof, the Liam Jones thing. Yeah. When it came out, it's like, oh, yeah, he shuts down everybody. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> jerk. Guess who could have used him, Jim? Uh, if only there was a backman that we could use. Anyway, uh, King is three plus goals, two is twenty five. He's done that. He's really, really, really looked good at times this yeah. year too. So this feels um, like a random game where Lacoste will have twenty and three. <laughs> sure, uh, Rory Lobb three. No, three no, of the last four. No. You hate Lobb. I'm I get throwing that. the flag. Rory Lobb has been awful this year. He's kicked two plus in three of the last four though. So doesn't mind it. Just no. here and there. He's been average. And I feel like in terms of other GW, uh, GWS, other Gold Coast. Sort of things like since Took Miller's been out, you've got Matt Rowe just tailing it up. It just feels like Fiorini hasn't lifted like I thought he would. They do just have like these weird gaps in their roster now. Where yeah. it's like there's like two dudes that yeah. they're missing, and it's like, well, they're injured. So um, I don't know. How are you feeling about your fantasy pick there, Leo? I'm looking at Bailey Smith for 100 plus fantasy points, $2.10 with Ladbrokes. Um, since coming back from injury, he's been in outstanding form. He's got a three round average of 109. So nice. I think he'll be looking to continue that and yeah, score 100 points. Dogs have won four yeah. straight against Gold Coast as well. Yeah, I did mention and him last week, Bailey Humphrey. He had a really good game. Yeah, it was a great run. Yeah, yeah. So right for my super coach. It, yeah, there you go. Yeah, but it's like that. everyone was like, oh, he's the next Petrarca. I was like, no, he's not. He's actually going to be really good. Just don't put that pressure on the poor kid. Yep. Uh, so this is a trick on. I'm going to have to go the dog. Yeah, same. Yeah. Both these teams are my bogey teams in tipping, so I'm just defaulting to the dogs. <laughs> well, I'll tip Gold Coast one week. They'll lose. And it will be a really fun one, though, when you flip over to it on Saturday night. You're just like, oh, yeah, hot, sweaty, greasy conditions. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Love it. Uh, the Shooty Bowl. Oh, Who God. did this? West Coast Yeah, Essendon. me. West Coast, $10. The Lions, somehow only 50 Essendon, $1.06. <laughs> You you just look at this and go, this is a game Essendon would lose. Like it's just it feels so Essendon y, but then you see how bad West Coast are, and you're like, nah, not gonna happen. West Coast have lost their last eight by 40 or more. Would the Essendon VFL team beat this Eagles team? No. The uh, the Brisbane Lions VFL team would beat them by a hundred though. All right. Just checking. Uh, West Coast have lost seven out of their last eighteen. Eight or eight by forty or more. Seven of the last eight at Optus have gone over, which just means Get on Essendon and kick a lot of points. Yep. Uh, the bo- so this is how I've looked at it. I'm Essendon are going to win, no doubt about that. 
current percentage of 102.6, this is where they need that boost where late in the year you're like, or if you know you'd, you'd absolutely killed the Eagles, I've it's never, very important. I've never seen a, a bit of percentage come into play at the end of a season. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Seven like months ago. <laughs> so yeah, so you need to sort of you want them to get near that one ten mark. What you, what they need to do, obviously, sort of what um, Hawthorne did last week. You want to kick one twenty, one thirty plus, just keep going. Just keep and going. just keep going. Just down. Jake Stringer kicks seven in the second half. Just downhill ski like you always do, pal. So who do we like the most for the goal kicking? Langford. 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 Three plus. Uh, he's also had 15 plus in his 15 plus disposals in his last eight games at Optus Stadium, Ooh. which is wild. He's two dollars fifty to do that. But I'm looking at Essendon over 111 and a half points yep. at a dollar eighty eight. They kicked a stack of points in round one against Hawthorne on a wet, windy day here at the MCG on a you know pretty good deck in Perth where you've seen Carlson just get on the afterburners. Yep. It can happen. You can score. West Coast's point average this year uh, is re- is just terrible. Under 59 and a half. I don't think the average for the year is above that. A dollar eighty-five for under uh, 59 and a half. They've leaked 1158 points in 10 games. That's a lot. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, they, yeah. and let's remember, Essendon did put up 100 against Geelong. Yep. So if they play like that, they'll yeah. kick 150, 160. Yeah, the Bombers. Know, the Bombers have been one of the better attacking teams all season, yeah, right? Even without, that's always been, but that's been Essendon for the last couple of years. Ah, like, yeah. oh, they're fun to watch. Ah, oh, crap, they're leaky in defence. Yeah. They, if they can shore up that defence, just. The smallest bit. They'll restrict West Coast to six, seven goals. They'll do that. Tipper also two plus, three dollars twenty. He's done it in his last three against the Eagles. How do we feel about a stringer or a draper? I mean, this is a game that Jake Stringer will kick six and yep. no one will care. Yep. It feels like the sort of weird one where, yeah. Like Draper just, will have twenty touches as well. They'll just, just be lining up, yeah. Yeah. just coming out of that forward line. Just the size of it. Yeah, team. as long as whoever whoever this week's Corey Durden is gets out of the way so someone can kick ten. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh cost me. Uh, who is the fantasy play here, Leo? I'm having a look at Zach Merritt. He got 158 last week against Richmond. He was, Zerat! He oh, was, 35 plus is $2.35 for him. Zerat. Yeah. Great value, I reckon that. Um, he's for 120 plus fantasy points, he's $2.55. But if you're not sure about that, 110 plus is $1.77. So Ooh. playing, as we mentioned, a very poor West Coast team, if Hawthorne's midfield can score well against. Uh, West Coast, I think Nash got like 148 or something. Yep. You just feel like if that have Parrish, this would easily be 100 plus. Just well, that extra had, link. Um, Peter Wright as well. Oh, he'd kick 10. Yeah, absolutely. And what, Shield missed last week as well? Setterfield. Setterfield. Jeez. So he's still injured. Yeah. I just wanted to bring him up for the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> you, you break up my heart here, Leo. <laughs> just kick the heart. man while he's down. <laughs> uh, the picks are obviously Essendon. Essendon. Yeah, and Kostatsky, I got his tips in. He's Essendon. He also Richmond, took the Port Adelaide. Adelaide. Oh, the Tigers are two dollars oh two with better a dollar eighty with Ladbrokes. The line is two and a half. It shouldn't be. Dead coach bounce, baby. Dead yeah. coach bounce. Yeah. The over under one hundred sixty seven. That's a pretty tough one, I find. Um, but Richmond, for me, yeah. dead coach bounce. Dim up. He's gone. Is he so going to Ibiza or Lake George? What do you reckon? <laughs> I just I worry that he says he calls it Ibiza. Yeah, it's like have you you literally never heard anyone say that out loud, have you? <laughs> it's like, so did Dusty actually say that to you? Did he just text it to you? Because yeah. I feel like he texted it to you. <laughs> it's like oh, Dusty told me to go to Ibiza. Does Dusty ever use that word? I know. <laughs> like what are we doing? Well, here? Dusty this probably can't say because he's usually half tanked sure. when he says it. Oh, it's Ibiza. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> we love you, Dusty. Don't come after me. Uh, seven straight for Port. Including a couple of big scalps in there, Melbourne, Essen, and Saints. How well did Roran Treadray's uh, take? Oh, this is untentable for Ken Hinckley age. Untentable. untentable. Yeah, the position is untentable. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, thing is, if this was a Marvel, I'd be backing Port 100 million percent to win because they don't lose a Marvel. What nine happened last th- time Port were here? 9 and 13 at the G. They got smashed by pies, didn't they? There you go. 70 points. Three and five at the G over the last five years. Just a bit of a tricky one. And I feel like. The Tigers last week, what, dream time? Should have won. Should have won. But didn't. Yeah. Really screwed up at the end. What yeah. are you doing? They've won the last two against Port, three of the last four. As you'd expect, Tigers been, you know, Better a juggernaut. Port, yeah. And they beat Port them in that prelim. More Still up and down than a toaster on a roller coaster. But the, the vibe of this one, it's hard to pass, I think. Just to try to figure out who's going to dominate. I've ended up landing with Port, I think, is my pick. Um, you look at the way that Rosie and Butters played last week, absolutely immense. 
The cool thing is, I've been on them from the get go this season because I feel like I yelled re- about Butters, and then he's been like the best player in the comp since. I've actually loved them. I've been all over them since. I think I did the first port game this season, maybe. I think mine's so, from round three, yeah. round three or four. I started absolutely loved it. Thirty one last week for Rosie. He's averaging over twenty five. You love to see that. Uh, and Butters, thirty two in his plus in his last two. So thirty plus for each of them. Can they back it up? Hundred percent, they can. Hundred percent, they can against this Richmond midfield, which. At times feels holier than, I don't know, Leo's jocks. So oh. um, I feel like they both go 30 plus. Taranto, 30 plus as well. He's done that in six straight. Well, he's the only one winning the ball. He's the only one who's actually getting the ball. And uh, Do you reckon they'll pick Noah Cumberland this week finally? Like he's actually been kicking goals and then Dimmer dropped him. And then he was best on ground last week in the VFL. There you go. Maybe he got involved in the soccer game that were playing in Punt Road yesterday. It's like they've changed up the trading routine. Oh, look at this. It's just sometimes you need a new voice. Yeah. A new voice from the three-time premiership coach at Dunderheads. <laughs> anyway, Bolton, two-plus goals. Dusty, two-plus goals. Just pick Noah Cumberland, please. That's where I'm going. I'm going to Bolton. He's done – I think Bolton has done so in the last couple of games. Dusty, look, you know I've been on the Dusty train the last few weeks. Um, $2.10 for Dusty, $1.70 for Bolton. Uh, lean on your ball winners there, the 30-pluses. Especially at the G. I think Rosie and Butters will be right amongst it. Ollie Wines is big taking crowd. – I think Wines has taken all of your criticism to heart. Yeah, he was good last He's week. He's had a couple of really good weeks now. So, he was terrible before. But at the same time, uh, last week, he was going going up against a team he loves to smash, and he did so again. So it's pretty tricky. I'm fascinated to see what will happen here. I'm tipping Port, but I worry about it. But anyway, Leo. Fantasy pick. Uh, you mentioned him, Dusty. I'm on his. Uh, I'm on the train as well. Hey. Ninety plus fantasy points is a dollar ninety with Ladbrokes. He's found some form over the past few weeks, and his three round average when it comes to fantasy is 106. Wee. So um, that yeah just shows his form, and I think uh, yeah he loves playing at the G as well. So ninety plus is a, a great bet. That is good. Um, the vibe on I think it was. There's also the there's a boke yeah there's a boke one that I had last week. 20 plus, and he smashed it. And he's had 20 plus in 20 of their last 22 against Richmond. He just like, he's also played 20 games against Richmond. That's yeah. just been around well, for a long time. He's played over 300. It's not bad. Uh, anyway, so seven straight for Port. I think it's eight. I don't trust it. I wouldn't probably bet this one. This is the one where I'm just looking at going, stay away, stay away. It's like me and the Bulldogs got cast cam. Tough scenes. Uh, so the tip is Port. Port. Port, yeah. Stats guy also with Port. I just don't feel good about it, though. No. Tigers could be up and about, but, geez, last week was a worry. Collingwood, North Melbourne, Alex. Yeah, Collingwood, $1.05, line 53 and a half. <laughs> Why is that? North pushed Sydney all the way last week. Yeah, well, Sydney at 12th. Uh, north at $12. <laughs> the over under is 166 and a half. Shout out to Steel, Steel Side Bottom playing game 300. That's someone, Mason like, Cox, game 100. Don't care. <laughs> Could have been game 400 for Steel. Like he's, he feels like he's been around that yeah. long. Uh, let's just start with him. 20 plus $1.50. He's done that in his last six. He has been doing a great job. He's awesome. I think this will be fun to watch. Like, Collingwood are fun to watch in general, but watching North Melbourne last week. Are you the one who jumps on Twitter just to watch, like, the animals being killed videos? Because <laughs> uh, your the algorithm sort of changed slightly and you have just, like, stuck a little bit too long on one. It's like, now your timeline's just flooded with them because I feel like that's what you're into right now. If you no. want to watch North Melbourne, it's like, Check out this deer being eaten by 18 goddamn wolves. And you're like, oh, no. I don't want to see this. Yeah. I was like, yeah, give it to me. <laughs> I want to see it again. Exactly. But no, if I'm Brett Ratton. Which like, you're not, just I'm to not. make sure that we're all I work full-time, not part-time. Whoa. Yeah. Hashtag drive-by. Uh, let Wardlaw and Sheasel run run with them. Just like, all right, boys, you're up against the best midfielder in the competition. You took it up to Luke Parker, Chad Warner, and Errol Gordon last week. Here's the next step. These blokes beat them last year. Go nuts. Good luck. Run with them I and like see it. what you learn. So let's let's just go with this. I'm going aggressive with North Melbourne here. Sheasel 25 plus, Wardlaw 20, and Simpkin 25 plus. He was fantastic last week. Uh, Simpkin's got the 25 plus in his last 10. Wardlaw 20 plus, $2.65. He dead set got his head taken off by Will Hayward, who didn't even get cited anyway. And Sheasel 25 plus, $1.87. He had two goals last week. Uh, really good game. It was actually... I wasn't a Swans fan. It would have been a really enjoyable game to watch, seeing these kids be like, oh, yeah, North Melbourne, they're going to, they're on track. There's so something there. So how did you feel in the stands watching your team about to lose to North? Um, if you want to see my text chain to a couple of friends, 
early on, early on, I was like, this is great. If the Swans kick straight, we'll win by 100 points. And then in the third quarter, I text someone. It was, I think we're about 20 points up. I was like, we're going to lose this. Like, I could just see the way the game was going. And if it wasn't rigged, you would have. I mean, if they had, you know... People. I saw it live. It's rigged for money. All right, yeah. settle yeah. down there, Sonia Curry. Oh, that was so <laughs> funny seeing all the fans throw all the, like, trash on the ground. It would have been like, if they came over the PA and went, this is what happened, it actually might have been better because we, no one knew till like, we were walking out and seeing it on Twitter or whatever after the game. Uh, but yeah, Suva, if he had his kicking boots on, would have won the game for Talk North. about Harry Mackay-esque. I'm going to try to kick this into the roof vibes. Yeah, Jeez. what was he doing? Uh, average last week, but two two goals still, two goals plus is $1.70. Um, this is a really weird stat for North. Each of the eight teams that have last played the Swans, they've covered in their next match. Really? Yeah. So the line's 10 goals, basically. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So this could be 180 to 121. Yes. <laughs> uh, but for the Pies, Pendles, 25 plus. He's done so in 14 of his last 17 against North. Two bucks, 10. It's like a fine wine. God, he's good. Uh, my check, three plus. Uh, has done so in the last four, $1.85. I reckon we hit the over. Last four between yeah. these two have gone over. I know that wine bet's quirky, but I feel like this is like a 140 to 60, 70 game. Yep. Like Collingwood kicked 20 plus goals, but North still kicked 10 to 12. The over is just singing to yeah. me like a siren. It's just like if if they let the, because if they tried set up defensively against Collingwood, they're just going to break them apart and yeah. it's going to be like 90 to 30. And it's like, ah, oh, that was gross. But I, I think they'll get more out of it even if Colin would kick 20-odd goals, but they kick 10 to 13 themselves. Like, we ran with them. There were bits where we broke through them and looked kind of good, but we're just not there, yep. which is obvious. Yep. Checks out. Uh, so I'm going to watch it. I'm looking forward to it. Leo. I'm looking at Jack Zebel to have 100-plus fantasy points. That's because he's going to have 17 kick <laughs> Exactly right. $2.05 with it. Lad Brooks. The one week the Swans <laughs> kicked straight was last week. Dang Cause's head's going to explode. Yeah. It's just like, I figure. Uh, but he averages 103 this season. So just to hit his average, he's paying $2.05. So, yeah. again, great value. Not bad. Um, Numbers down. As you said, takes kickouts um, and gets involved a lot in North's ball movement. So yep. Chopping in front of Jamie Elliott and Mason Cox. And, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, the pick's obviously Collingwood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stats guy them yep. too. Even stats guy going against his own team. He owes me a sandwich now too. Does he? Yeah, North Melbourne Swans. thought you owed him a sandwich. Yeah, I owe him a sandwich. He owes me one. So we, right. I'll buy him one the next day. He can buy me one. <laughs> As opposed to nobody buying anyone a sandwich. Yeah, but no, well, we owe <laughs> no, each other pay a the sandwich. sandwich. you got to pay the yeah, sandwich. you got to pay the sandwich. Like Adelaide, Brisbane, the final game of the round in Adelaide, 4.40 p.m. on a Sunday RV. I flipped and flopped on this a few times. I've landed with Adelaide. It's weird. $2.12, right. head to head. Why? Because where is it? Yeah. It's Adelaide. What do Brisbane do when they're in Adelaide? Stick up the joint. That was port. Two twelve dollar seventy five for Brisbane. The line is only four and a half uh, in favour of Brisbane, and the over is one hundred sixty four and a half points. Brisbane are on a trot of winning seven straight. You got Chucky Cameron firing up. You've got that midfield crushing it. But there's just something about Adelaide that I kind of love at the moment. And uh, I mean, they haven't been. Like blowing teams off the park, obviously, right? Yeah. Not quite that nice little purple patch they had. They had a rough one last week. I just feel like at home, they're going to be okay. Big crowd. They're going to be okay. Uh, if you look at the other, so in terms of uh, Jordan Dawson, Rory Laird, uh, they're your ball winners, I think, for this one. I think the stats have been basically like, cool, Dawson. 30 plus, last three straight at the Adelaide Oval. Loves that. Laird has gone for 33 plus in his last three against Brisbane as well. Loves playing against the Brisbane Lions. Tex, big Tex Walker, still booting bags, aged 429. Uh, three plus and five of his last six. Yep. You can just sort of streaming up in that, you know, left wing, turning around, going bang, off he goes, just marking 35 out, slight angle, just slotting one. I'm feeling good about Tex. Uh, up the front, though, I just Joe Danaher has been the difference, I feel like, for Brisbane the last few weeks. Joe's been fantastic. Him in Adelaide, not feeling it. A bit I, cold. Just a bit weird, a bit wonky. I think Chucky goes off against his old team. Yeah, everyone forgets that, yeah. Four plus, he's done that three straight away from home. Chucky Cameron, four plus. Dunkley, 
25 plus for him, I think. I was actually looking for a price on that one was the last thing I actually checked out. Uh, but I don't know. How are we feeling about this one? It just does feel a little bit wonky in my brain is all. Uh, what do you reckon, Alex? Adelaide were just so bad last week. That was the big problem that I had. Like, if it was three, four goals, i like, yeah, okay. Because at the start, I'm like, I'm just going to tip Adelaide. Like, just sort of what I was thinking. And then having paid close attention to Brisbane and then going back and watching bits and pieces of that game in Ballarat, I'm just like, oh, no, 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 oh, no. Like, you can't, it's hard to tip a team off that. Brisbane are just flying. Everything is just working for them at the moment. I think Adelaide, because they're that team that we talked about. They're on the way up. There's going to be bumps in the road. Brisbane, they are the <laughs> most complete team definitely, in the AFL at the moment. Definitely a bump. Yeah. So I think Brisbane are just going to have enough to eke it out. I wouldn't be surprised if this was only a couple of goals and it's just sort of late in the last quarter they get yeah. away. I just feel like there's like we've seen Brisbane have these incredible, incredible performances and then they go away from home and they just fall flat on their face somewhere. Yeah, but they... And it feels like against a team like Adelaide who just weren't that good in Ballarat and I just feel like there's something calling me about this Adelaide team. They've just got a bit there. The likes of Dawson, the likes of Tex, I think they stand up at home and get the win. Um, I think it was Chucky that I was looking at for the four plus. That is $4.50, which I kind of like. And the Tex three plus goals. I mean, their last three away games... They've kicked 152, uh, 108, and 100 points, Brisbane. No, Tex is not listed, so I don't know. Maybe he's not actually playing. <laughs> they don't name Tex to later They haven't named it. It's a Sunday game, so maybe they just don't have him there. Uh, but the Dawson, 30-plus, and I think we had – what was the – I had the Dunkley, 25-plus. That's like one of the absolute it's go-to. Like they all just went over 25. The go-to multi of just like the Neil uh, Dunkley, 25-plus, has banged them in McCluggage, the multi. McCluggage, 20. McCluggage, 20, of course. Just feels like there's going to be a weird one. It's, I think Brisbane at Adelaide Oval, three and eight. They got so smashed in round one. So not bad, but they had been pretty good over the last few seasons. I feel like it's three and two over the last five years. I mean, they still. did win in Adelaide the last time I was there. I was just out in the middle of nowhere. Exactly. So <laughs> bit of a weird one, bit of a wonky one. Leo. I'm having a look at Will Ashcroft, the rising mm. line, 90 plus fantasy points, $2.45. But if you're a bit worried about that, 80 plus fantasy points, $1.58 with Ladbrokes. Three round average of 99. He's been in great form. He had 30 disposals and a goal last week. He was really, Jesus. really good against the Suns. Um, and yeah, just seems to be sort of building into the season nicely. It's sort of like Dacos last year built into the season a little just bit. Just do enough. Yeah. Get, find your feet. I reckon Learn. that Ashcroft Learn on might the job. be in for a, for a big month or so. He's also got a better, probably. Maybe not as experienced, but he's got like a really good midfield group around him. Yeah, absolutely. Similar to Dacos last I mean, he had year as well. Pendlebury around him. That's, yeah. you know, not yeah. bad. Still. Lucky Neil, know. Pendlebury to learn off. Pretty good. Exactly. Yeah, very good. Um, that's a good one. I like that. Bit of the young gun. Uh, so, my pick, I think I'm going Adelaide. Mm. And I've loved Brisbane all year. Yeah. This is like, as I was going I into this one, I'm like, Ugh, every damn. game this year. Uh, Brisbane? Brisbane. What do you reckon, Leo? Brisbane. Stats guy also with Brisbane. Nice one. All right. Best bet for the week. Harry McFly, 15 bucks. You little ripper. I oh, don't know about You're this You're just one. a sucker for punishment. I really am. He's going to do it once, though, I swear. Kerr, nine now. He could do that. He could do nine he against Sydney. Do. Five plus. $3.60. Yeah. It's such a horrible, horrible is, price. Yeah. But he could easily That's do it. That's terrible. That is bad. Really, three bucks sixty is just gross. Uh, my other one, though, was Jordan Dawson. Yeah. The 30-plus disposals, $2.25. I just love that at home. I think he has a massive, massive, massive game against this Lions midfield. I think it's going to be really fun. Um, and Tex, if he actually plays, <laughs> three-plus is pretty good too. Five or six, he's done that. Yeah. Chaos. Uh, what about you, Alex? You got the best one? Yeah, Essendon over 111.5 points against oh, West Coast good, at yeah. $1.88. Pretty yeah. keen on that one. Um, and then just, yeah, I'm going to have something on Luke Jackson, a dollar sixty-eight to score a goal at the MCG. I think those two, nice and safe, nothing sort of too expansive. My expansive one, it's not really that. It'd be Isaac Heaney to kick two goals tomorrow night at two dollars and two cents. Um, yeah, Leo, what's your favourite fantasy one? Probably Canelio for hundred plus two dollars and five with Ladbrokes. I just think without Cali and just eat his average, I think that's great value. Nice one. So remember that dumb multi I took last week in the Swans North game? It was Errol and Suva that missed. <laughs> I couldn't believe that Errol cost like me 16 third, so. legs. 19 legs. Yeah. Suva, Suva, need, Suva needed three and Errol needed like another two touches. Yep. 
So that's what effort. Errol ended up. Whoa, Errol ended yeah. up on twenty four or something like that. I feel like yeah, twenty three, twenty four. Yeah. Sad. Absolute bad beats. All right, that's it for Code Bear Daily Weekly AFL this week. We'll be back on deck next week for round twelve. Footy's back. Uh, buys coming up. Thank God. Jeez. Hey, are we does that mean we're in for a bit of a shorter week next week, workload wise? I think so. Oh yeah, that'd be kind of good. I'm anyway, uh, get around the shows. We have the Code Bear Daily Show. We've got the EPL Show. We have the NRL Show. You can find them all where you get your podcasts and your podcast app, etc. Like, view, star, room, would you? And chuck a comment on there. Talk about Alex's hair. I don't know. Um, maybe his boots. What about Leo's haircut, though? That's more my sort of point. So. Yeah, I know. Great stuff. He knew he was going to be on, on screen sharp. a bit more. He's yeah. like, oh, I'm going to be in camera. What it's about Marcus? Awesome. He, was on, he was on two shows yesterday and doesn't even turn up today. Classic. What a man. Uh, <laughs> check us a follow across all the socials. YouTube, Facebook, IG, Twitter, TikTok, and Twitch. Shout out to Stats Guy going to a musical tonight. He just had a good song and dance, didn't he? He went to Broadway, Clapped seriously. Along. Clapped along. Clapped along. He loves Wicked. He's in New um, York and he goes, I know, like, on his own and goes to Broadway. <laughs> to be honest, it's... A great experience, I'll tell you. <laughs> I went to New um, York and didn't do that. Oh, you're an uncultured slob. Ah, anyway. <laughs> Natural History Museum's awesome. <laughs> it's got dinosaurs. Uh, so, <laughs> you laugh at this, but no, seriously, the Natural History Museum is absolutely fantastic. No, to the I wasn't. I spent three and a half hours there. It's amazing. I went there for all of my birthdays. Yeah. Because we lived like a block behind it. So I, every birthday I'd be like, i got nothing else to do. I'm going to go down the natural. Look at this dinosaur. That's sick. Yeah, and then, seriously. Uh, yeah. Well worth the 30 bucks I paid to get in. Took mates and my brother and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what do we say here? We've got thank you to Leo for thank doing you. a great job on the fantasy gear. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, cheers. Awesome. Thank you, Gerald, as always, for producing this gear. Thanks to me for uh, getting through the fact that I can't feel my left leg. <laughs> Just <laughs> Shop awesome. it off. Uh, what do we say, Alex? Gamble responsibly. Right, Mayo picks come in. Happy punting. We'll catch you next week. Go bet daily A- AFL weekly. <laughs> Code back. Bet Daily AFL Weekly. Code Bet Daily Weekly AFL. Oh my God, shut up. It's over. It's all, <laughs> it's all done. Out. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.